Hello. Hello, Hi. Dad. Good morning. Hi, Heather. Hi, good morning, Angel. Raj here. Good morning, Heather. Raj, Raja? Raj. You can just call me Raj. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess morning, we are yeah. live now. Well, get started with the session. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wishing you all a warm welcome to BEST 2020. I'm Raj and I'm the moderator for the session. Uh, the first topic uh, is stepping into your power zone. And it is with tremendous pleasure that I welcome the esteemed speakers here, uh, Heather Joy Bassett and Angel Alvaro. Uh, it is an absolute privilege to have you both here. Uh, before we proceed, we have 12 minutes uh, for each speaker. And I have a gentle reminder, musical bell, uh, in case we are getting very close to the time limit. Uh, uh, so we'll start with uh, Heather uh, Joy Bassett. She's an international speaker, author, business life tra strategist, and she helps people unravel the mysteries of their own stories that redefine what is truly possible for them in this lifetime. She's a world champion in lacrosse, a master of the scalpel in podiatry, helping over 15,000 clients improve their quality of life. Running a successful clinic for well over three decades has given her great insights into people, teams, and business. Heather, the stage is all yours. Awesome, thank you. Great to, great to be here. And the world champion part of me wants to talk about stepping into power. Because I remember as a world champion, when, when I was training, we would have these rah-rah sessions before to get everyone hyped up. And if we look at Amy Cuddy's famous TED talk about power poses to shift our brain chemistry, to step us into our power, then at the time I thought, yeah, we all did that, but then, as time goes by and then being a speaker and then exploring being a woman, being in my feminine, being in my masculine, being in the union, then it's like really what is that stepping into the power? What brings us into that, into that place? And then I realised I could go back in time and see all the people going rah, rah, ready to go off and play our game, but so many of them were just doing it because it was the done thing. It wasn't how they stepped into their power. It was how they joined with the, the connection. But some would go off and they would walk and they would have silent time. Some would sit and deeply reflect. Some would have the headphones on, da 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 keeping everyone else out of their, out of their vicinity. So then, it's, then I started to explore when, when we were doing this. So then I reached out to a few friends and I was like, so how do you step into your power? What does that mean for you? And one of them was, I'm in my power when I trust myself and when I trust that the universe is happening for me then I'm in my power. And there's a locus of control. If we think the control is outside of us, then it's perhaps harder to be in our power. Someone else, I said, how do you step into your power? And she's like, it's in my resilience. It's always in my resilience. And someone else, it's in my joy. It's in my joy. So then I looked at the Hawkins scale of consciousness and there's a line below where is force and a line above, which is willingness, acceptance, joy, love, peace. And I may have not have them in order. And below is the anger, the resentment, the blame. And I think how often people think that they're in their power 
And one of the times people often say, I've heard, and I've probably been there myself, is I'm just speaking my truth. But it's really projected out there and they think they're in their power. But if we use the Hawkins scale of consciousness, then they're in force. So then my curiosity is like, ah, so is power the awakening versus the force that's down below? And then as I asked different people from around the globe, different genders, different backgrounds, there wasn't a common theme of what was stepping into their power for them. And I think that's one of the things. We have the Amy Cuddy, yes, we can do moves that increase our brain chemistry. And that takes us often into the doing things. So then we can be in our power in our doing. We can be in our power of being. And then what happens with the union of that? So the Flow Research Collective talks about being in flow and having peak performance. So in there, you're being and you're doing. I thought, is that the union? That sounds like a pretty cool, a pretty cool thing. And then I looked at for me, what, yeah, what really works for me? And I can't say there's a, a one thing. <laughs> And just like the people around, around, the, around the globe that I've spoken to, and I did a very brief search on the internet, I think it is important in this day and age that people find their own way of stepping into the power. And what we'll often do is, well, you know, we'll try on someone else's way and we'll go, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. And then after a while, it's like, well, you know what? That's not how I step into my power. There might be, or well, maybe it was, or maybe it'll come back. Like give permission to go, oh, what is my deep truth? What is your deep truth about, what does this power even look like? What does that look like for you? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? And I know many people in their power. And again, I'm sure I did it years ago, you know, with a, with a look, with a word, with a something can almost decimate someone who's in a very vulnerable state. But again, that power isn't really power for me, then that's force and it's projection at someone else. I've been in many groups around the world where people think they're in their power and they'll say they're in their power and I'm like, you're in a state of force. And that's impacting people, not in a negative, in a negative way. And then is power about impacting in a positive way? So one of my coaches, his thing is powered by your success. And I thought, cool, that's cool. That doesn't actually mean empowered by your success, does it? So I would love to have this groovy little model that I can go, hey, try this on. This is the answer. This is the way to do it. This is the way that you can step into your power. But for me, <laughs> it really is cool. Try it on. See what works for you. Again, what feels good. Maybe it's what gets results. <sighs> Maybe it's just your love to. And that was one of the things that I played with. I know that I'm more in my power when I speak with love and compassion. And for me, I'm more in my power when I'm talking about my love to. 
and I'm more in my power when my heart is open. And often that heart open means being vulnerable and being courageous. It doesn't look like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is being that humble, that courageous, that vulnerable. So I'm in wonder and awe and curiosity of really what is power and what does it look like for each individual. And I also look forward to hearing Angel speak now <laughs> and hear what her thoughts are and also whether there's any questions or thoughts from the audience. So thank you. Wow, that was uh, beautiful and uh, so insightful about uh, trusting in self, uh, exploring how you went about exploring different ways how people step into power, about being comfortable in, in one's own skin, uh, exploring one's own deep truth, about being vulnerable, courageous, uh, uh, filled with wonder, curiosity, depends on depending on what. Uh, what it means to each person about uh, being truly uh, one's being truly in aligned with oneself and stepping into one's power. That that was uh, amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, before we uh, move to uh, Angel, I just have a special uh, announcement for you from uh, WEF uh, 2020. Uh, it is my privilege on behalf of Women Economic Forum 2020 to confer on you, Heather Joy Bassett, the mm -hmm. award of iconic women creating a better world for all. Uh, the award should arrive in your uh, email in a fortnight. Within a fortnight. And, uh, uh, now on the uh, same topic of stepping into your power zone, uh, our next speaker uh, for the day is uh, Angel uh, Alvaro. Uh, Angel is an international transformational speaker, co-author, and an upcoming author. Uh, she's a master energy healer born from long lines of powerful healers on both sides of her family. Healing is and has always been in her blood and not just learned. Deeply inspiring profile, uh, Angel. And she's a leading life accelerator and wealth activator coach. She takes her clients to that deepest, darkest, darkest places and crevices and brings them back out to the light, healed and free from shadows of the past. Wow. Uh, turning it over to you, uh, Angel. Looking forward to hearing from you now. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. Imagine you stepping into your power zone despite the dark moments of your life. How would your life look like? How different would your life be now? Today, I'm going to be vulnerable with you and share darkest moments of my life to show you my journey to stepping into my power and hopefully that you can uh, see how you can step into your power as well. You see, I was born in poverty in the Philippines. We were fortunate enough to have three meals uh, three times a day. At one point, my mom had to split one egg and one cup of rice to feed 10 people. She's always told me to be resourceful while growing up. Find ways so I won't starve. Um, find ways so that I can get ahead in life. I grew up in a very negative and abusive environment, physically, mentally, emotionally any kind of abuse that you can think of. My father used to beat me up all the time with his favorite letter belt just because I wasn't being a good role model to my siblings or that it was my fault. He would remind me every day how disappointed he was that I wasn't a boy. So I grew up always trying to prove myself to him that as a girl or I can do anything that a boy can. I became a tomboy and dressed up like a boy even behave and acted like a boy. I hated myself because no matter what I did, I was worth nothing to him unless it's worth bragging to his friends and that I was always in the top three in class. At the age of five, I was raped. Growing up, there were other incidents of attempted rapes as well. I experienced date rape during university, which resulted in unwanted pregnancy, which led me to having an abortion. I felt like a whore. I felt like I was dirty. 
I was not good enough to anyone, even to myself. After abortion, I felt like I was a murderer and I felt so guilty and ashamed, which I carried this all my life growing up as an adult. While growing up, I was that weird psychic kid that could do weird things. And I was called names because of it. You know, during high school, there was that time where my special abilities was so prominent. I had a premonition of the town market on fire, uh, which included our store uh, slash home at that time, which came through 30 minutes after I saw that. I had a premonition of my father being gunned down in front of our house, uh, which happened 20 minutes later after I saw that. Uh, growing up, I knew that my grandfather was a powerful healer when he was alive, according to stories from my aunts and uncles. I've seen and watched one of my uncles from my mother's side, who was a healer, help heal people uh, with their afflictions or whatever issues they had at that time. I was told that I was the one who's meant to follow my ancestors' footsteps as a healer. Of course, I pushed it all away so that I could fit in, so that I wouldn't be called names anymore, like being a witch or evil's daughter, or you can think of anything else that will come up. I have had this ability all throughout my life. You know, after university, I was brought to the emergency room because of dengue fever. The doctor said that a day um, later and I would have been dead at age 19. I had blood transfusion at that time. So, so after that, recovering from dengue fever, I spent most of my adult life overseas, mostly to run away from my father and from the abusive environment I grew up with. Uh, being in Taiwan, Cyprus, and Italy, I learned so many things in my life and realized that you could really never run away from whatever it is that you're going through in your life and that you have to face it and heal from it. So while I was in Cyprus, um, there was an attemp attempted rape again that had happened. And I asked myself why this rape energy seems to keep on following me. And... I, I got so tired of the subject of sexual abuse and any kind of abuse really in my life. So I left Cyprus and went to Rome. Uh, and this is where I met my loving husband now uh, and soulmate uh, online. While I was in Rome, he actually lives in Canada. While in Rome, I began soul searching and began looking for answers and began my spiritual journey. Um, but at least at that time, the rape energy seemed to stop. I enjoyed my life being in Rome, touring whenever I can. Uh, and I believe that meeting my husband, my soulmate at that time was meant to be. So in short, after meetings and ex uh, getting to know each other, we ended up getting married. Had to get married in the Philippines. And after the wedding, um, he had to go back to Canada and I stayed behind while waiting for my visa to be issued. And that was one of the most painful four months of separation. Who would have thought that I would learn to love someone or to be with someone who loves me um, after the crazy shitty stuff that I had been through in my life? But it doesn't get happy and rosy just yet. After I immigrated in Canada, I was diagnosed with severe depression and was prescribed um, medications for it. You see, I was self-sustained for a long time, and now I was dependent on my husband. So severe depression in and out for over three years. Suicidal thoughts had been my constant companion at the time. Crying all the time felt like nothing and felt like my life was useless, worthless. I was hurting myself, my husband, and our daughter, who's a baby at the time. So as I was soul searching, we went into financial turmoil. I called it my cosmic 4 by 4 or dark night of the soul in the spiritual community. In 2015, we had to file for a consumer proposal or bankruptcy because of a six-figure credit card debts that had been accumulated over the years. And a lot of it was bad investments that I did and opportunities that failed during my attempt to make money from home. I kept looking for answers outside of me. I kept spending money on courses, workshops, programs, coaches, mentors that I thought would help me give me the answers I was looking for. Finally, in 2017, I started really looking deep within me and decided to finally embrace who I truly am. 
as a healer. My ancestors on both sides were family of powerful healers. I had strangers tell me that I was a powerful healer. I thought that was crazy and strange when I heard this, but I found out later that those were messages sent to me from the universe that I have been ignoring for a long time. Who can resonate with that? Like, do you really listen to the messages you receive from the universe or do you ignore them so that you could fit in? After embracing who I am, I also learned that what happened in my life, you know, the several rapes, attempted rapes, all the abuse, the betrayals, all of the, the severe depression and suicidal thoughts and tendencies, being born in poverty, I had to go through them in order to understand what it feels like to be in these situations, to heal myself from all of this trauma, to put myself back together so that I could powerfully heal and guide other women who have been through rape, who have been broken into pieces, who have been abused, who have been in severe depression, have been robbed of their voices. When I embraced being an energy healer, when I reawakened my psychic abilities, when I get reconnected with the creator, God, divine source, I realized I stepped into my power. I stepped into my power zone and everything started to fall into place. Money started to come from everywhere with ease. Clients started pouring easily. Opportunities come from everywhere. Manifesting became effortless. Through energy healing, I am actually doing something that I absolutely love, something that makes me happy, something that makes me content, and more importantly, heals and changes lives at a very deep level. I am doing my soul's purpose, and I am in my power zone. Now I'm also teaching um, online workshops about Money Mindset Mastery for over three years now in a coach for entrepreneurs who are ready to step into their power zone by finding out their soul's purpose and embracing it um, in their lives and including a spirituality in their lives. I finally feel that I am worthy, that I am enough, that I am a powerful being, that my life has meaning. And it feels so good. And I realize I am being selfish for not sharing my story because my story can and will heal so many women. And it already has. Forget the judgments, forget the criticisms. It's time to live my life. And so should you. It is time that you step into your power zone just like I did. And it is possible to rise to the top and embrace your greatness and step into your power zone. Even if you've been broken into multiple pieces even if you've been in the dark for too long. So I would like to conclude by sharing with you a few steps on how to step into your power zone. I'm sure you've been asking, how can you really step into your power zone? And I always have a different perspective on things. So first, look into your journey, journal about it, honor all of your experiences to see how far you've come. Be very proud of yourself. Find out your soul's purpose and embrace it. You're meant to do something bigger in this lifetime. Everything falls into place in your life. And therefore, you have the confidence in yourself. You feel fulfilled and empowered as you live your soul's purpose, which then impacts people's lives in a huge way. The next thing is learn to love yourself in the deepest way. Because when you love yourself, when you fill your cups, you're able to share the overflow from your cup. Heal your trauma, because then when you heal your trauma, you are empowered, you are in your power zone, and you're not bleeding anymore to others. Live your life according to your truth, according to who you truly are, and according to your design. That Those are what I can tell you, um, how to step into your power zone. Thank you uh, to WEP and to everyone who made this possible and for this opportunity to share this with you. Wow, Angel, what a deeply moving and inspiring life journey that you shared with us. I'm truly breathtaking. Uh, that was amazing. And uh, 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 before we move on to any questions and uh, interactions while we're working for the, uh, while we're waiting for the uh, other speaker to join, I have again a special announcement to make, uh, Angel from uh, West 2020 for you. Uh, so Angel, it's my privilege, 
on behalf of Women Economic Forum 2020 to confer on you, uh, Angel Alvaro, the award of iconic women creating a better world for all. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us today. And uh, thanks to both of you for creating a better world for all and for everyone with uh, uh, the kind of work that you're doing and transforming lives. I'm uh, truly amazed you, uh, both the conversations you brought about so all these different dimensions and uh, that was amazing. Let me uh, quickly go back to our uh, web, uh, WF 2020 site to see if there are any questions from the attendees. Just a moment. Thank you, Angel. And well done. Thank you, Heather, as well. Thank you. I look forward to connecting and learning more about you. Me as well. Um, seeing different perspectives and different things, it's, it's always amazing. So yeah. thank you. I would like to just read out some of the comments that have come in. We don't have any uh, Q&A yet. I don't see any uh, pending. Uh, I see folks watching from Melbourne. Uh, greetings from Suriname. And, uh, 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 and folks like saying like the great point that power does not equal force and that you speak very clear. Well done. I could clearly see a lot of uh, folks like basically digesting, reflecting on uh, what they just heard. Uh, do you have any questions for each other? Yeah, I do have one. When you said follow your design angel, was that a particular methodology that you were mentioning? Yeah, so with um, one of that with following living your life according to your design, uh, I'm certified in human design. Uh, <laughs> so I, I do human design. But other than that, um, it's like, you really got to live your life according to your own terms, according to your design and not based on your parents, not based on the society because my life was designed by my father. Take computer science, take this because this is how you're going to make money. Meanwhile, I really wanted to take uh, psychology, <laughs> behavioral <laughs> psychology to computer science, you know. So what? that's what I mean when living your life according to your own ter terms, according so to your design. What is your design in human design? I'm human design projector. So I really, uh, being a healer, <laughs> being true to my design. How about you? I'm a splenic manifester. Awesome. My husband's a manifester. <laughs> yeah, cool. So for anyone who hasn't, doesn't know what we're talking about at the moment, there is a thing called human design. And you can go and check it out online. I learned about it a couple of years ago. And it's been profound. And it is one of the tools that I use when the same as you, Angel, helping people to really connect to their own, to their own truth. Um, because again, as a projector, you're 20 something percent of the world. As a manifester, I'm around 8%. Around percent, yeah. yeah. And you and I have spent much of our lives trying to be <laughs> like the generators who make up, who, who make the world go around for us. Um, so yeah, I love, I love knowing that about, uh, and that, yeah. I love knowing about I, you as well. Exactly. And to me, human design is like, this is the missing owner's manual for all of us. And that <laughs> since our birth, that we should have this information, you know, seeing yeah. my clients find out what's going on, it makes them embrace their power and become so confident and realize yeah. that these are all lies and this is my truth. Okay. Forget about, about the, the lies, lies you've been you telling me, you know? <laughs> That's how I see it with my clients. So yeah, that's another tool that I use for my coaching and healing as well. So combining you, energy healing and human design are amazing. Yeah. Are you a 6'2 by any chance? What's that? 6'2, yes. Six two? No, actually 4'6. A 4'6. Ah, yeah. interesting. So these numbers were... Yeah. Uh, I have a question for both of you, Heather and Angel. Yeah. Uh, currently... 
the kind of transformation, the challenge the world is going through. Uh, pretty much all of us, uh, all humankind is in this together, what we are going through right now. Uh, and it seems to be signaling some kind of change. So what, uh, uh, basically what suggestion, what message do you have out there uh, to the folks listening in from all over the world today in terms of how to get past this current scenario and how to move past or how to transform into a new normal? Angel, would you like to, I invite you. Would you like to go first? <laughs> I sure. invite you to go first. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'd love this. So for me, with what's going on around the world, like globally right now, to me, I see that uh, this as a global cosmic survivor. Like I mentioned in my story, um, I had a cosmic survivor. This is a global cosmic survivor for us, meaning everyone is being awakened. Everyone is being called to step up and embrace their own power to live your soul's purpose. We're not here to just work and do our jobs or whatever you're doing right now. If being in your career right now is your soul's purpose, great. But if that is something that you're unhappy with, that you hate it, that you drag yourself every day, you know that there's something bigger and the universe have been calling you and this is that wake up call. So it's time for you to really step up and to really, you know, maybe stepping up is not a thing for you and it's just look deep within. What is your soul whispering to you? Because over the years, your soul has been whispering to you and you've been ignoring it. It's time to listen to your soul because there's no any other way to go after this. Um, and one of the messages that I've been receiving is that, you know, from here onwards, it's always about you living your life with integrity, living your life with soul's purpose and seeing people stepping into their soul's purpose is the most amazing thing that you can do. All those people that you're meant to serve have been waiting for you. So it's time for you to show up. Thanks, Angel. Yeah. It's like, is there anything that I can add to that? Mm. That's a wonderful question. It really is looking at if we come from that place of life is happening for us and that we're co-creating this and there are people really deeply suffering many things on many layers. And as a futurist, it's like, where is the gold? What is, what is the gift in all of this, even with the sorrow and the grief? And we're mourning. There's a lot of mourning and a lot of grieving for what we had, that often if we look at what we really had, was it what we thought we had? That busyness, that hustle, that being on all the time. And I know I have friends who are, who are working in the ICUs and the hospitals and they are, they are just driven at the moment. They're exhausted trying to keep up with things. But for many in the world, it is such a time of deep reflection because there's rest, there's space to go, really, what is important? what deeply matters and really it's a place of, of deep deeper connection for many many people and again that is a glorious 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 gift to us so there is the there is the pain and then there is the gift and then i'm curious what what the generations will what my grandchildren i have grandchildren 18 months and three years what is the story they will tell? And then being mindful of our younger ones, what is, the, what is the fear that we put onto them that is not even theirs? And I just, I'm curious to sit back in 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and, and, and see what is the her story and what is the history that we create from this. Wow, that was... Uh, amazing uh, two beautiful perspectives that both of both of you brought into that into the response to that uh, question uh, it's again thank you so much i feel really honored and it's been a pleasure to be uh, 
here with both of you today. Uh, thanks again, and thanks to Dr. Har Harbin for bringing us all together and All Ladies League Sisterhood and the uh, WEF 2020 platform for making this happen. Uh, uh, despite what we are going through, it's amazing this oneness uh, to be here, to be uh, sharing thoughts, to be in the same uh, creative zone as well. Yeah. And uh, that was both power, uh, both power packed and filled with compassion as well, this particular conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Heather, and thanks, Angel. Thank you so and much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both, and thank you for hosting us as well. Mm. Thank, thank you, you Heather. Thank you, Raj, Rajara or Raj. <laughs> Any other thoughts you would like to share here, or we can uh, end the session? We can yeah, end. Please, please stay safe. Please stay healthy, and please love yourself and and others. Thank you so much. Be blessed, and the same to you and to everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Till next time. Till next time. Bye. 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 I guess we have to leave the session. We do. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Lots of love. Hang up. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye again. <laughs>